Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Lorna Byrne is who we're looking at today, so let's jump right in. And special thanks to the person who suggested looking at this lady. And when you do make suggestions, please let me know if it's okay or not to say thank you and mention your name. Some people don't mind, but others prefer to remain anonymous. Anyhow, this is Lorna Byrne, and we can see that she's the author of a few books, titles like Angels in My Hair, so we're off to an interesting start. We'll notice that her main focus is on angels. She even has a section about guided meditation with your guardian angel. She seems like a really caring lady that even has her own children's foundation that's been going for five years. But there are some concerning things we'll read, like this page regarding a prayer scroll. She says that years ago the angels handed her a scroll and told her that when she was praying she should hold it in her hand and that the angels would join her in praying for everything contained within it. We've heard some strange stories about angels in the past, but this one is unique. We can find out more about her here, where it says she's been seeing angels since she was a baby, and she sees them physically with as much clarity as the rest of us see people. She continues with more stories like how she met Joe, the man the angel Elijah foretold she would marry. If we scroll down even further, we can read her message about what she believes. Every person has a soul. Every person has a guardian angel. God is real. And it doesn't matter what you believe or even if you believe in nothing. Folks, this woman is definitely not a follower of Jesus. She's a New Age spiritualist that may actually be seeing angels, but they're not holy angels from God. If we go to her YouTube page, we'll see that over 45,000 people are being deceived by these videos. It's very clear that she's not a Christian, but a spiritual teacher that is deceiving millions of people around the world, it says, with these stories of how she interacts with angels on a daily basis. In her most recent video, she explains who God is. You know, we call God by so many different names. You know, as you said, Pearl there, you know, sometimes people will say, you know, the higher power, or they will say, I am calling on the universe, but you're calling on God spiritually because it is the spiritual part of you that you want to let free. You want that soul, that spark of light that God has given you. You want it to step forward. You're clinging, in a sense, to finding out who you are. So, so are you saying, that, or do you feel that it's our human self that creates these divisions by even putting a name I, on things? Yes, I, I think so, because there is so many divisions there between religion and, and those that would say they're only spiritual. Um, and it's the human part that has put that there. But we've put it there because, you know, in a sense, we're, we're lost. And in a sense, we don't want to be ruled in, in that way. We want to believe freely in God. We want to believe that we do have a soul and that there are angels there and that our loved ones, when they die, you know, they go to heaven or, or to that special place in that in that way. So we're we're clinging on in, in a sense of, you know, well, if I say and I don't use the word God or I don't use the, lo the word Lord or or I don't use the word Jesus or I don't use the word Allah, you know, there's so many names for God. You know, sometimes we just call on God and say, please help me. You know, spiritually we say that. But one thing I do love, and that is, you know, I had, when I was writing um, the first book, Angels in My Hair, that was one thing that really kind of, you know, pulled at me. And, and I said to God, you know, what am I to call you? You know, what am I to call you? Because even myself not being able to read or anything, but 
and being isolated in one sense here in Ireland and, you know, not hearing much of the outside world. I already knew because God and the angels had already told me that there was such a big division in that way that people were starting to rise up. And I just said to God, well, what will I call you? And just what surprised me was God just said to me, Lorna, what do you call me? And I always remember being so surprised. And, and I said, God, of course, like, you know, that way, why are you asking me? You should be telling me. Um, God, of course. And th the thing is, God said, the word God is universal. This falls in line with the ecumenical movement that the Pope and many others are now following. It doesn't matter what you call God, Jesus or Allah, because there is only one God. This is a lie from the enemy, and if we read the comments below this video, we see that so many people are being deceived. In this interview, she explains that she was brought up Catholic, but regardless if she was brought up Jewish or Muslim, it wouldn't matter because God would have still chosen her. She has all sorts of other strange videos like talking about beings on other planets, talking about the queen of angels, teaching on how to talk to angels, and how to listen to your guardian angel. So are these the same angels that people like Tracy Cook and others in the New Apostolic Reformation are seeing? Is it possible for us to see angels? Absolutely, because scripture tells us that when being hospitable to strangers, we may have been entertaining angels. But if the Bible doesn't go into this much detail about angel encounters like Lorna goes into, then neither should we. What's the difference between her and Tracy Cook, Emma Stark, or Chris Vallotton teaching about working with angels? The last three, at least in word, would say that Jesus is Lord but they're all making stuff up or they're having false angel encounters. Look at this. Chris shares with School of Ministry students the importance of submitting to authority and working under an apostolic mantle. When we move from denominationalism to apostleships, we will have access to the angelic realm. That's not God's truth. That's what Chris wants you to believe because there is no scripture to back that up. We must pray for the people being deceived by Lorna and that they would come to know the one true God and be saved through Jesus. And the same goes for the people being deceived within the New Apostolic Reformation. But what about the deceivers themselves? Our gut instinct is yes, because most believe that there's always hope for anyone regardless of how lost they are. It is interesting, though, that God does mention a couple times in the book of Jeremiah that people had gone too far and that God won't even listen to our prayers. We see in Jeremiah 7.16 that God tells him not to pray. And again, we see this in 11.14. Truth is that only God knows how far any of these people have gone, so let's keep all of them in our prayers, especially the ones that are being deceived. But as for anyone following Lorna Byrne, please understand that there is only one God and only one way to speak with God and to be saved, and that's through his son, Christ Jesus. We'll leave it here for today, but as always, leave your thoughts and comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.